ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون اما بعد Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to have the taqwa of Allah, which is the consciousness of Allah, the fear of Allah, the protection from Allah's punishment, as is rightfully due to Allah and to not die except as Muslims. And a part of this taqwa, of course, is fasting in the month of Ramadan and all of the acts of worship in this uh, great month. And one of the most important acts of worship that a person can do is making dua, which is supplicating to Allah Azza praying and asking from Allah's bounty. And in fact, there is a very intimate relationship between fasting and dua, fasting and calling upon Allah Azza fasting and supplicating Allah for anything that the person needs. And so inshallah today, we will spend a few minutes ta'ala talking about this dua, supplicating to Allah Azza How does Allah accept us? How does Allah accept our supplication? What are the things that we can do to increase the likelihood that Allah Azza will accept it? First, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, in a very SubhanAllah interesting verse, in Surah Al-Baqarah, He says, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانِ that if my servants ask you about me, then indeed I am near. And I answer, of course, the call of the one who calls me. <laughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here is telling the Prophet sallallahu that there are people who asked the Prophet about him. And in some of the narrations it is said that some of the Sahaba came to the Prophet sallallahu and they said, Aqaribu rabbuna I said, is he close so that we should whisper to him or talk softly to him? Or is he far so that we have to call upon him with a loud voice? And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse answers the question himself. And he does not say, so usually he says, قُلْ Say O Muhammad to them, following answer. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never uses the word قُلْ. To, in order to further emphasize how close he is. He doesn't say, tell them, Muhammad, that I am close. He said, I am close. Immediately. To emphasize how close he truly is to us. That when we call upon him, he's already answering. Not only this, he says, He says, let them answer me. My call, meaning answer everything that I have made obligated upon them. Including this fast. What's interesting is that this verse is right after the verse talking about Shahr Ramadan. And the following verse, Allah Azza continues talking about Ramadan. And right in between, He's talking about dua. Seemingly, it has nothing to do with Ramadan. But in fact, the scholars say that because this verse is in the middle of the verses that talk about Ramadan, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala is telling you one of the most important functions of a person who fasts is to make dua. And this is why we know that the Prophet Sallallahu has said in the hadith that there are thalatha la turaddu da'watuhu. There are three, Allah Azza does not reject their dua at all. It is completely accepted. And he says one of them is as-sa'imi hatta yaftu. He says the fasting person until he breaks his fast. The fasting person until he breaks his fast. Which means that a person as long as the person is fasting, they can make dua and Allah Azza wa will accept it. In fact, usually, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala puts shurud, which are conditions for the acceptance of something. If you want Jannah, He says you have to uh, do the belief, for example. You have to believe and do righteous deeds. However, in dua, there's no shalat. There's no condition. It's a conditionless thing. Even in this, He says there is no, there's no strings attached. Meaning, as long as you make the dua, we will accept. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. As long as you make the dua, we will accept. And why not? When Allah Azza wa Jal, He accepted the dua of Iblis. 
Satan. When he says, Rabbi anzurni ila yawmi ba'athun. Oh Allah, give me respite until the day uh, that they will be resurrected. He says, you will be from the people who have been given respite. I'll let you live until then. That's fine. Because there's nothing, if we think about it, there's nothing that Allah Azza wa Jal cannot do. There's nothing that's too heavy of a burden for Allah Azza wa Jal to give us. What are you asking for? Is it that impossible for Allah Azza wa Jal to give it to you? It is not. However, there are things that we can do to, in order to make sure that we actually, inshallah ta'ala, maintain that our dua will be that much more accepted. Because when a person makes dua, three things will happen. Either Allah Azza wa Jal will give it to you in this life, or He will save it for you in the hereafter, or Yasrifu Anka min Mithluha, that He will remove from you a similar evil or an equivalent evil from you. Meaning perhaps Allah Azza wa Jal had destined that some sort of calamity was going to befall the believer. But because of his dua, Allah Azza wa Jal, instead of giving him what he was asking for, he will remove an equivalent evil from the person that will no longer apply to him. Or he will give it to you, or he will save it for the hereafter. Either way, you're in a win-win-win situation. You can never go wrong in making dua. In fact, one of the tabi'in, he says, I make so much dua that I even ask Allah Azza wa Jal for the salt that I put on my food. This is how much I'm making dua for. That one of the Sahaba, he says, we used to make dua that Allah Azza wa helps us in a situation when one of our sandals, the straps, would break. Because this is how close the relationship was with Allah Azza wa Even to that degree, they were making the dua. Allah Azza wa he says, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ وَدْعُونِ أَسْتَجِبْ And your Lord has said, call me and I will answer you. Here's where it is. There's no, there's no conditions. And then he says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ عَنْ عِبَادَتِي سَيَدْخُلُونَ جَهَنَّمَ دَاخِرِينَ He says, indeed the ones who are arrogant of my worship, are too arrogant to worship me, they will enter Jahannam. They will enter the hellfire. May Allah Azza wa Jalla protect us from the hellfire. Here he's saying that there might be people out here who do not make dua. They feel too arrogant to ask Allah Azza wa Jalla. They feel too arrogant to humble themselves because here, he is alluding to one of the true essence of the dua. And this is the first thing that we will mention of how to make sure that your dua is that much more accepted, which is humbling oneself in front of Allah. This is the first one. Humbling oneself in front of Allah. So here he is talking about istighbar, being arrogant, being in a situation where you say, I have enough. You never have enough, truly. You never have enough. Do you know if Allah has forgiven you? If Allah will enter you Jannah? We do not know these things. Which is why a person should never stop making this dua. Do you know if Allah has forgiven your parents? Do you know if Allah will protect your children after you pass away? You do not. You need to make dua for these people, for your parents, for your children. In fact, some of the scholars say, you should always on a daily basis make dua for these people. Because if you look, many of the prophets, may the peace and blessing be upon them, they never left these types of dua. Nuh was making this dua. رَبِّغْفِرْ لِي وَلِوَالِدَيَّ وَلِمَنْ دَخَلَ بَيْتِيَ مُؤْمِنًا وَلِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ He's making dua first for his parents and then all of the mu'mineen that he knows and then he's making general dua for everybody who is a believer on this planet. Zakariya alayhi salam when he wanted to ask Allah Azza wa for a child he was humbling himself in front of Allah Azza wa He was mentioning that how he is weakened he's grown old in age He's fearful for his family. He doesn't know what's going to happen to the people after him. And so he's making dua that Allah Azza wa grants him an heir. A person who can carry the mantle of the da'wah after him. Humbling himself in front of Allah Azza wa Yunus alayhi salam humbled himself in front of Allah Azza wa for Allah to save him from the belly of the whale. And so on and so forth. You can look, Musa alayhi salam humbled himself when he was homeless and he had no work or job and he was lost in a foreign land, he had nowhere to go except to Allah. And what does he say? رَبِّ إِنِّي لِمَا أَنزَلْتَ إِلَيَّ مِنْ خَيْرٍ فَقِيرٍ I am poor to that good which you have sent down. I'm a poor person. I am here your humble servant. Humbling oneself in front of Allah Azza wa Jal. What else can they do? If we look in Surah Al-Anbiya and taking the examples of all of these prophets whom Allah Azza wa talks about, He mentions three things that they did. 
in order for their da'a to get accepted. And this is the surah in which Allah mentions the du'a of Yunus السلام, where he says, La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al When he was in the dhulumat, when he was in the darkness, there is no God but you, subhanak, inni kuntu min al He's admitting to his sins. This is the second thing. Admitting to your faults, your shortcomings. He admitted to his shortcomings. Our Prophet ﷺ, when he said, Sayyid al-Istighfar, the master of istighfar, uh, we know it. In that dua, he says, I admit to your blessing upon me. Meaning, I, have, I had nothing to do with these blessings that I have in my life. I have children, I have a wealth, I have a house. All of these things are from you alone. And then he says that I'm also admitting to my shortcomings and my sins that I have. And this is our Prophet ﷺ, and we know that he has no sins. His ma'asum, Allah Azza has protected him from this. But he's teaching us who we, us, we ourselves, we do sin. And we have so many shortcomings that how we should admit to Allah Azza our sins and our shortcomings. And this will be so much more effective in Allah answering the dua. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says, after all of these, where he's, ta he's, he's talking about Ayyub, إِذْ نَادَ رَبِّ أَنِّي مَسَّنِي الضُّرُّ وَأَنْتَ أَرْحَمُ الرَّاحِمِينَ فَاسْتَجَبْنَا لَهُ He says, Oh Allah, I have been afflicted with some harm. And you are the most merciful. This was after 18 years, by the way, of him persevering in that patience. Where he never before asked Allah Azza wa to alleviate. He knew it was a test, so he had patience. And then he makes dua, and Allah Azza wa says, فَاسْتَجَبْنَا لَهُ We answered him. And Yunus, and then Nuh, wa Nuhan idh nada min qablu, fastajabna lah. He says, fastajabna lah. If you look, the statement is repeated many times in this surah. Fastajabna lah. We answered his dua. We answered his dua. We answered his dua. At the last one, when he's talking about Zakariya, he says, wa Zakariya idh nada rabbah, rabbi la tadharni farda, wa anta khayru barithin. Oh Allah, do not leave me alone, meaning without any air, to continue this message, to continue this work. And you are the best of the ones who does this. Then he talks about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is now telling us how we can get the similar thing. And here's the things that Allah Azza wa Jal puts. Innahum kanu yusadu'una fil khayrat. First thing, they used to hasten and be quick to do righteous deeds. They were never, they never waited back. They're always quick to do something good. Whenever there was an initiative, Whenever there was something, a call to give charity, a call for salah, a call to fast, a call to help someone, a call, whatever it was, they were quick to do that good deed. You said, Yu'una fil khayrat. This is the first one. The second one, Wa'idunana raghaban wa rahaba. They used to call upon us out of want and out of fear. This is important. Many times we ask Allah Azzawajal for things, but many people fail to seek refuge in Allah from some things. There are things that we do and deem fear. We fear entering the hellfire. We fear Allah's wrath. We fear that Allah will change our situation. Which is why one of the du'as that the Prophet used to make on a regular basis, he would say, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min zawali ni'matik. Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from the depletion of your blessing upon me. Meaning Allah has blessed me. Trust me, all of us here, living here in the United States, we are all, wallahi, blessed. Much more than many other Muslim brothers and sisters around the world. You should ask Allah Azza wa to protect this blessing. And you should ask Allah Azza wa that He helps you utilize this blessing for His sake. So that on the Day of Judgment, it is not an argument against you, but it is an argument for you. Because imagine you're standing on the Day of Judgment, and in front of millions of other people who never had anything close to what you had. And they say, Ya Allah, why are you letting this person enter Jannah when you blessed him in this life and you're, 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 you're making us similar to each other? You have to justify this blessing. And you have to also protect it. And so this is why the Prophet himself used to protect the blessing of Allah upon him by saying, Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from the depletion of your blessing. From your blessing that it should go away. Zawali ni'matik. Wa min tahawuli afiyatik. And from the changing of this healthiness that I am in. If I am healthy physically, Healthy financially, healthy in my family life, my social life, all of these ways. I am healthy. I ask Allah Azza wa Jalla to protect His healthiness. Woman fajat in and He says from the surprising of 
your anger upon me. Because if Allah Azzawajal gets angry and he wants to punish someone, the punishment will come in the blink of an eye. It'll be very sudden. And so he was seeking refuge in Allah that he should do this. And then he says the last one, these four things, وَمِنْ جَمِيعِ سَخَطِرِ And from all of your anger. Any form of anger that you have upon me, I seek refuge in it. I seek refuge in you from it. In order for Allah Azzawajal to protect it. So they used to say, they used to be quick to do good deeds. They used to call upon Allah in want and out of fear. And the third thing is, وَكَانُوا لَنَا خَاشِعِينَ And they were humble to us. They had khushur to us. They were humiliated. They had humility in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we said before, these are the things that a person can do in order for his dua to be accepted, just like the prophets that Allah Azza has sent. Another thing is to make sure that your dua that you are making in this blessed month and outside of this blessed month is related to the hereafter. Meaning many times people ask the dunya for the pure sake of the dunya and do not ask for the hereafter. It is permissible for the person to ask for the dunya. In fact, it is encouraged. But it has to be for the sake of the hereafter as well. And I will mention a few examples. Two examples, both of them are from Ibrahim السلام, and his dua that he was making. The first is where he says, Rabbi inni askantu min dhur, inni askantu min dhurriyati biwadin ghayra di zar'in inda baytik al-muharram. Oh Allah, I have put my progeny, my, my uh, son, he put his son of course and his wife, his son Ismail and his wife Hajar, in the valley of Mecca. And this is before Mecca was a city, there was nothing there. Even, subhanAllah, the original place of the Kaaba was buried under sand. There's nothing there, barren. Not even a tree was growing, or a bush, or a shrub, or anything. And he says, oh Allah, he wants to make dua to Allah to protect them. And instead of saying, oh, just protect them, for the sake of protecting them, because they're my family, he is showing his intention in why he wants Allah Azzawajal to protect him. Why? He says, رَبَّنَا لِيُقِيمُ الصَّلَىٰ O our Lord, in order for them to establish the Salah. He doesn't say in order for them to build a nice building, or to have a bright future, or to have a nice career, or to have all of these things. He's saying, O Allah, I want you to protect them in order for them to be able to establish Salah. He's asking dunya protection, but for the sake of the hereafter. And this should be our mentality whenever we ask Allah of something. If I ask Allah for wealth, I should ask for the wealth so that it helps me succeed in my hereafter. Because if I'm asking for wealth and it destroys my hereafter, what good did it bring? It didn't bring anything. This is why many times people will ask for the dunya and Allah does not give it to them. Because He knows that perhaps if He gave it to them, it, not, it might not be good for their situation. And then indeed they have to, He saves it for them in the hereafter. Or He removes an equal uh, harm from them, equivalent to it. Which is why a person should never give up on making the dua, but a person should always try to refine their intentions in making these dua. He also used to say in the dua, we know Rabbana, taqabbal minna inna ka anta samir alim. Says, Oh Allah, accept from us. This is him and Ismail making this dua. That you are the hearing, you are the knowing. رَبَّنَا وَجْعَلْنَا مُسْلِمَيْنِ لَكَ وَمِنْ ذُرِّيَّتِنَا أُمَّةً مُسْلِمَةً لَكَ وَأَرِنَا مَنَاسِكَنَا وَتُبْ عَلَيْنَا He says, O oh Allah, do all of this protect us, help us and assist us in order for us and grant us an ummah, a nation that is Muslim to you from our progeny. They were making dua and Allah Azza wa accepted their dua. From Ismail's progeny, we have an entire ummah now, a nation that is of course submitting to Allah Azza wa Jal. Then he says, رَبَّنَا وَبَعَثْ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا مِنْ أَنفُسِهِ O oh Allah, send amongst them a messenger from themselves. This is Allah Azza wa accepting the dua and sending Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Meaning our Prophet Muhammad is a result of the dua of Ibrahim Alayhi Salam and Ismail Alayhi Salam. Making dua to Allah that he sends them Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They make dua for their children. We know that they make dua for their parents. We should do the same because if you do these two things as well, including all of the ones that we have mentioned before, your dua bi'idhnillahi ta'ala will be much more accepted. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah wa lakum fa astaghfiruhu inna huwa ghafur.
الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الخلق وأشرف المرسلين سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد We know that a person can take more measures than this. There are many other things that a person can do in making dua, in calling upon Allah Azza wa Jal. A person can memorize some of the ad'iya, some of the supplications that the Prophet Sallallahu would make. Because we know that those are perhaps the best supplications that a person can make. We do, however, know that when the dua is coming from the heart, it is better than when it's just done out of habit. Meaning if a person is just reciting because he's used to reciting, it is different than when the person really means every word that the person is saying. And that when the dua comes with khushur, we said this humbleness in front of Allah, we know that it's at a time that is blessed. For example, when a person is fasting, or during the night, or during when the person is alone, or in their sujood, or at the end of their prayer, before they make the salam, this is even in your normal salah, if you finish the tahiyyat and before the salam, this is a moment in which the dua is also accepted. We know that the last 10 nights of Ramadan are coming up. And that in these last 10 nights, there is Laylatul Qadr. And of course, if a person is able to make dua during this night, we know that it will be that much more accepted as well. We know that Aisha radiallahu she said to the Prophet sallam, if I catch Laylatul Qadr, what should I say during that night? What is the best dua that I can make? What is the best dua that she could make? The Prophet tells her it is very simple. Allahumma inna ka'afuun tuhibbul afwa fa'afu'an. Oh Allah, you are forgiving and you love forgiveness, so please forgive me. This is it. Forgiveness. If we have forgiveness, Allah, we have everything. And afu is a step stronger than maghfirah. Maghfirah is usually what we translate as forgiveness. Afu is completely removing it. Maghfirah is where Allah switches the sin into a good deed. Meaning the sin is still there. It's not completely wiped out, but it's switched into a good deed. It's written as a hasana now. However, Afu is where Allah removes the sin, removes the effect of the sin, and is as if the sin never existed. And instead of that, you had the time in which you were spending, perhaps it will be written and replaced that you were doing something for the sake of Allah. This is Laf. This is why many of the Sahaba were recommended by the Prophet to ask Allah al Afu wal Afiyah, which is Afu, which is this type of forgiveness, this, which is a step higher that we said. And Afiyah is general healthiness in a person's life, in his religion, in his health, in his family, etc. Because if a person has Afiyah, he has everything. If he has health, in all of these ways, then he has everything that he needs. In fact, the Prophet ﷺ, he visited a man who was sick. And he says he was so weakened by his sickness that he was like al farq He was like, you know, a sick animal, subhanAllah. Very thin and frail. And so the Prophet ﷺ knew that there was something wrong. This is not a normal sickness. And so he said, did you used to make a certain dua? Were you making a certain supplication to Allah? He says, yes. He says, what were you saying? He says, I used to say, oh Allah, because your punishment in the hereafter is that much more severe, whatever punishment I was going to get in the hereafter, make it for me now, here in this life. Because I can't handle the one in the hereafter. Right? The hellfire is so much worse. One moment in the hellfire is worse than years of punishment here. So he's like, I'd rather get it all here. Give it to me here. And he says, as soon as he started making this dua, he became sick and frail like this situation. The Prophet ﷺ said, You do not, you can't handle it. You should not make this dua, this is a wrong dua to make. He said, rather, you should ask Allah for al-afwa wa al-afwa. You should ask Allah for forgiveness and for health. Because if Allah wants to, He doesn't have to punish you. He doesn't need to punish anyone. Allah fi ghina an thalik. Allah is subhanAllah far beyond this. He does not need anyone to punish. And he does not need the punishment from anyone. And he says this very clearly in the Hadith al qudsiyyah and in the Quran itself. He doesn't need your punishment. And so rather, he can easily forgive you just like this, if you truly ask him. And so the Prophet then told the man, you should make this following dua. Allahumma atini fi dunya hasana, wa fil akhirati hasana, wa qini adab al He says, oh Allah, Grant me in this life a hasana, something good. And in the hereafter, something good. 
and save me from and protect me from the punishment of the hellfire. This is al-afu al afiyah This is where Allah forgives you and He saves you from all of these evils. He does not need your punishment. He does not need your worship either. Allah fi ghina dhalika kulli. But Allah loves it. I mean, imagine where He says, "Man lam yas'alillah yaghdab alayhi." Whoever does not ask Allah, Allah gets angry at this person. Meaning, Allah wants you to ask Him. Usually with people, they do not want you to ask them anything. You ask your parent, you ask your wife, you ask your kids, you ask your husband, you ask whoever. They start complaining after a while. Man, you ask me too much. You're, you're, you're troubling me too much. Where with Allah, it's the exact opposite. He gets angry if you do not ask Him. Because in the end, you need Him, Wallah. We all need Him. We are all the poor ones, and Allah is the He is the one who is rich. He is the one who is deserving of all praise. With this, inshaAllah ta'ala, we can make dua that Allah Azzawajal forgives us and forgives our parents and their parents and anyone who has any rights upon us and that He forgives our children and protects them and saves them for the future in order for them to establish Islam and to establish Salah and to continue the work of da'wah bi'ithnillahi ta'ala. عباد الله إن الله ملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم مبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت وسلمت وباركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والمشركين أعداءك أعداء الدين ربنا اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وإسرافنا في أمرنا وثبت أقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم لا تدع لنا ذنبا إلا غفرته ولا هما إلا فرجته ولا دينا إلا قضيته ولا حاجة من حوائج الدنيا والآخرة إلا قضيتها وسرتها برحمتك يا رحم الرحمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم تقبل منا صيامنا وتقبل منا قيامنا وتقبل منا جميع أعمالنا اللهم تب علينا اللهم تب علينا وتقبل منا إنك أنت السميع عليم برحمتك يا رحمة الرحيمين وأقم الصلاة